Well, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a very clean installation of Windows 11 from a USB stick, and also you don't have to have a Microsoft account, which is awesome. And also, we can make it so that Windows doesn't install all the usual bloat. This is a very cool little trick, which not many people know about, but certainly I think for some of you out there, it's going to be very useful indeed. And potentially as well, for those of you that are getting stuck with the problem where you haven't got an internet connection whilst trying to install Windows 11, this is another good way of getting around that particular bug. So let's head over to the computer and take a closer look. Okay, so we're on our... Windows computer here, you need to be on a computer to download the software to create your installation file. So I'm gonna stick my USB drive into the computer. Ideally you want a eight gigabyte drive or more uh, that can be formatted and go to the Microsoft website. I'll put links for this in the video description. You can download the media creation tool and all that kind of stuff. So go to the create Windows 11 installation media Click on download now and it will save into your downloads folder. When it's done, click on open file. You'll get the user account control come up. So click on yes. You have no choice. You have to agree that. Now you can close down the browser in the background now. It's going to say getting a few things ready and you'll have to go through the licensing and accept it. Uh, there's no option. You have to accept it. So even if you read it and you don't like it, if you want Windows 11, you have to agree to it. So now we get the option for selecting a language and addition. Now you can just leave this ticked if you want, use the recommended options for this PC, or you can go ahead and choose an alternate language should you wish to, that is entirely up to you. The addition will remain the same regardless. So when you're ready, click on next and choose which media to use. So we've plugged in a USB flash drive. So we'll be using the USB flash drive. If you wish to create a DVD to do this on, choose ISO file and you can burn the DVD later. We'll be concentrating on the USB flash drive version as it's a lot easier. When you're ready, click on next and it will ask you to choose a USB drive. So we've only got one which is showing here, which is our D drive with no label. That is the one which we wish to use. So we're happy with that. So we'll click on next. And now what it's going to do is get a few things ready. So basically it's going to be downloading the Windows 11 ISO image from the Microsoft servers onto your PC. It's then going to put that from your PC onto the USB stick. This is a relatively lengthy process, so just be patient and let it do its thing, and we'll come back when we have something else to interact with. Okay, so at this point, our USB flash drive is ready. So that is done and dusted, so we can click on Finish, and it will remove some of the temporary files, which Windows has downloaded. So that is it, that is our drive prepared. So now we can go ahead and try to install our version of Windows. So you might want to get your boot menu up. Uh, I'm not too sure which key it is on this keyboard. It's one of the F9, F10, F11, F12, one of those. So I'm just gonna tap them all until we get our boot menu up. You can choose boot override as well if you wanted to, or if you've got a blank drive, it should just do that regardless anyway. And there we go, I think it was F10 on this board. So now to install Windows on our PC, we want to choose the appropriate boot device. So we'll choose our USB drive. This is the UV Kingston Data Traveler. When we're happy, press enter, and this will start the Windows setup. So at this point now, this is where normally you would leave this as it is because it's normally the right stuff for your region. But if you want to install Windows 11 without the bloat and with a bit more flexibility, the ability to hopefully not have an internet connection and also no Microsoft account, this is where we need to make some changes. So when it says language to install, we're gonna leave that as it is, because English is what we want, but the time and currency format is the important one. So we're gonna click on that, and what we're gonna do is go down to English World. So the reason we're doing this is because the world version has the bypasses for the restrictions. So if you're in the UK, you have to have Microsoft Edge. It's part of the installation. But if you're in the EU or various other places around the world, you can have the option to remove Microsoft Edge. So by choosing the World Edition, we basically get less of the bloatware. Also, it doesn't install the Microsoft Store as a default, and a lot of the apps simply just will not work or will not be present. So this is why we're choosing English World. So when you're happy, click on Next, and then you can choose your keyboard method. So we're gonna be using the United Kingdom Extended Version. Obviously, choose whichever keyboard layout or input method is appropriate 
to you and your region. You can always change this later on in Windows anyway, but it's probably easier just to do it now. So when you're happy, click on Next. Now we have the setup options. So we want to install Windows 11. You can also do the Repair My PC. So if you want to kind of go over an existing installation, you can do. But today's video, we're looking at fresh installations. So we'll just choose Install Windows 11. And also we have to agree that everything will be deleted, including files, apps, and settings. So basically a fresh installation. So click on Next. If you want to at this point, you can add a product key. It's not entirely necessary. Choice is entirely up to you. If you don't have a key, click on I don't have a product key. Next setup, we'll be getting a few things ready. So now we can choose which version of Windows we actually wish to install. So you can have Home, Education, or Pro effectively. So I'm gonna choose the Windows 11 Pro and click Next. And now you have to agree to the terms and conditions. And now it's going to search for a, an appropriate disk to actually install Windows onto. And because we've got a disk in here which has been used previously, disk zero is the top disk. So if you're on a traditional system, that top NVMe drive will be disk zero. Just go through, make sure it's the right one. So I'm happy this is this one. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of the partitions. So all we're left with is one single disk zero with all the unallocated space available to it. Just go ahead, delete your partitions as necessary. This drive is 512, but after the formatting it reduces down, so that is about right, right, 500 gigs. And there is our separate disk one, which is our USB stick. So we want to install Windows to disk zero. So we click on next, and it comes up saying it's ready to install. So it says you won't be able to use your PC for obvious reasons, and what it's gonna do is gonna install Windows 11 Pro, and it's going to keep nothing. So again, this is a fresh installation. So when you're happy, click on install. And this is a bit where we just essentially wait and let it do its thing until we are asked for some user intervention. So just be patient, let it do its thing, and we'll come back when there's something to interact with. So you'll get to a point where the circle is spinning for a long, long time, and then you'll get to the point where it says something went wrong, and it says, oh, OBE region, which stands for out of box experience and region. So you can choose now, you can try either start again or try again or skip. So we'll choose skip. And then we can choose our keyboard. Do you want to add a second one? No, we don't. We'll skip that. And I'll say, let's get you connected to a network. And we're not connected, so. At this point you have to either install the driver. I was hoping that we wouldn't have to go through doing this, but you can at this point do the shift F10 and you can do the command here to skip doing this. So this is the uh, out of box experience bypass. I'll put the details for that in the video description if you want to. Alternatively, if you have an internet connection, you can just go ahead and plug that in, which I'm gonna go ahead and do now. So we're plugged in, so this now will allow you to continue. Like I said, if you want to, you can use the out-of-box experience bypass or the bypass NRO as it's known. Again, that is in the video description, so you can copy and paste that into the command prompt. So now it's gonna check for the updates. Obviously, if you've done the uh, bypass NRO, then you won't get this section, it'll just bypass that. Again, it will do the uh, let's connect you to a network again, if you've done the bypass NRO, you won't be seeing this. And now you can name the device. So I'm just going to call it PC. Very imaginative. And I'll do another reboot. And again, it's gone to the Let's Connect to the Network. If you've done bypass NRO, you won't see this. So now you've got the options of how you want to uh, use the computer. Again, for personal use, and you can use a Microsoft account if you wish to. Or if you don't want a Microsoft account, you can go to set up for work or school and you don't have to put an account name in, just click on sign in options. And on here, choose join a domain instead. Don't worry about it if you haven't got a domain or you're not on a network, it doesn't make any difference at all. This is used to bypass the Microsoft account. So now we just type in a name, so we'll just call it PC1 for example. And create a password. I would suggest making one, but I'm not going to because I'll be deleting this account very shortly after this video. 
Next, you can choose things like your privacy settings. So you can turn all of this off um, if you are very much against any of this kind of telemetry stuff. So you can go ahead, just choose no for all those. Then click on accept. Next is going to check for Windows updates. Again, if you've done the bypass NRO command to uh, kind of disable the network connectivity, then you probably won't be seeing this. It'll just skip straight past it. But for those of you that have a network connectivity, you'll have to go through this, unfortunately. It just updates programs in the background, installs features, and yeah, downloads updates, all that kind of stuff. So just be patient, let it do its thing, and we'll come back when we have something to interact with. Okay, so there we go. Windows has finally finished installing. Uh, there's some things which it won't find. There's the MSI driver installer, so let's uh, cancel that for now. But you can see it's actually quite a minimal setup already. So just click on the start bar, you've basically got Edge, Settings, and your File Explorer listed there. And you can go through, and basically now, because this is the world version, you can uninstall things if you want to. So like Copilot, if you don't want it, uninstall it. But you can see this is a very minimal install comparatively from what you'd normally get. So that's uh, that's pretty nice. Some things won't work. So things like the Microsoft Store, if you click on it, it basically won't work because it thinks you're in the wrong region. If you do actually want these things to work at a later date, it's actually quite easy to do. All you need to do is to click on the settings cog, time and language, and go into your language and region. Where it says here region, country or region, you can just go ahead and set it back to United Kingdom. And then it will allow you to use the system as it would normally. So if you want to use the Microsoft Store, if you want to use Microsoft products and all that kind of stuff, you can do it that way. That is entirely up to you. At this point, I would suggest obviously not removing Microsoft Edge because you don't have another browser installed. So make sure before you do anything like that, that you install the browser of choice, uh, Safari, Chrome, whatever it is, Brave, whatever your personal preference is, do that first, because otherwise, obviously, if you get rid of Microsoft Edge, then uh, yeah, you're going to be stuck. So yeah, that is uh, pretty much it. So it's a nice, clean install. Not too much of the uh, the kind of guff going on that you normally see. Uh, things like OneDrive, you can still get rid of and all that kind of stuff. You can reduce it down even further. But in terms of a kind of a relatively lightweight install without having to do any real trickery, choosing the world as a region I think it's quite beneficial and hopefully it is to some of you guys out there watching. So there you go, there is how to install the, uh, the world version of Windows 11 and also bypass some of the things like the Microsoft account and potentially the network connectivity, should that be an issue. I think it's really nice to have a lightweight Windows 11 installation as an option. For me personally, I think I do use the Microsoft Store for research purposes and for downloading applications. So I'm kind of relatively keen to keep it and things like the xbox game bar i also use that and if you use microsoft games such as flight sim 2020 2024 etc then potentially you may need that anyway so this isn't a um kind of one-stop shop it isn't the, the cleanest of installations there are some kind of downsides but certainly for those of you that are just wanting a pc with kind of slightly more privacy concern stuff move to one side I think this is a pretty good choice. But anyway, let me know what you think about this one in the comment section. If you've got any problems or questions that you feel you need to ask, then hit that comment section. Or alternatively, head over to the Discord and you can leave any comments or questions you want to there. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.